Welcome to Introduction to Girl Scouting, our initial training for new volunteers. I am Kelly Pelham, Volunteer Support Specialist for Region 3, and we will also be hearing from Annie McAllister, who is your Volunteer Support Specialist for Regions 4 and 5, and Benita Jacobs, who is your Volunteer Support Specialist for Region 1. I'm going to be discussing your role as a leader and sharing some information about our organization. On this page, you have your index. Um, you can also print this out. We'll be sending it to you um, through email too as part of your new volunteer training kit. If you'll look to the right, you'll see that we have the Girl Scout Promise. At the beginning of each meeting, you would have the girls stand, raise their right hand with the Girl Scout sign and repeat on my honor. I will try to serve God and my country, to help people at all times, and to live by the Girl Scout law. And the Girl Scout law is as follows. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong and responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and be a sister to every Girl Scout. And it's also a good idea to have these on posters wherever your meeting space is. You can check out Pinterest so that you have a visual representation, even for those girls who maybe aren't great readers yet, but it just helps them memorize it by seeing the words also. And of course, our mission is always building girls of courage, confidence, and character who make the world a better place. We are so excited for you to join the Girl Scout movement as volunteers. Um, Girl Scouts empower girls everywhere to stand up and make a difference, and you're going to be part of helping them make this difference. Our council spans a 21 county region made up of nearly 6,000 girls and plenty of volunteers just like you, and together we are Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina. Our qualifications for troop co-leaders are that you're going to be responsible for facilitating the Girl Scout program, um, utilizing the Girl and Adults Partnership, and what this is going to look like is that you're going to use our volunteer toolkit, our VTK, our online um, program guide that we will discuss a little bit later on, and you're going to use those materials to run troop meetings for your girls. You're accountable to your service unit chair, which we'll go into further later on, and to whomever your volunteer support specialist is. Qualifications that we look for in co-leaders are that you are girl-focused, that you want to empower girls to lead activities, learn by doing, and cooperate with others on current issues that involve their interests and needs while having fun. Girl Scouts is girl-led, so that means that during the troop meetings that you're going to give them a choice. Say, hey, juniors, do we want to do this badge or are we more interested in doing this badge? And then whichever the girls decide, that's going to be the way that you go. As much as the girls are able to do during those troop meetings, they need to do with hands-on activity. Girls, children in general, learn by doing. That you have personal integrity. That you're going to be dependable, honest, and credible. Not only are we going to allow that you have a troop bank account, but you're also going to be responsible for other people's children. And in order to do this, the parents are going to be depending on you to be responsible in all of your actions to be transparent. We also look for adaptability, that you can adjust, modify your own behavior, and remain flexible and tolerant in response to changing situations and environments. Because no matter how well you may plan a troop meeting or an outing, things have a tendency to go awry. Whether it's girls not showing up on time, a parent running late, or the weather, however you react to a situation is going to be the way the girls react to a situation. They're not just going to remember the camping experiences, the badges, and the skills that they learned as Girl Scout, but they're going to have their memories of you as a leader and as a mentor. So whatever you want the girls to do action-wise, you need to be the first one to do that action. Oral communication, that you can express ideas and facts clearly and accurately. There's no reason to yell at the girls. I understand the girls can be rowdy and sometimes they don't want to listen. We ask that you utilize the Girl Scout quiet sign, which is going to be your right hand raised. You can, at the first troop meeting, you can practice, have them practice a sort of a game that as soon as your hand's raised, they close their lips and lift up their hand and see how quickly they can do it. So that when the room is rowdy, you can go ahead and employ that Girl Scout quiet sign and you can have the room go to a dead quiet in a matter of seconds instead of having to raise your voice. Everyone 
Women's Welcome and Girl Scouts. We foster to nurse girls, especially elementary school age, are going to start understanding and respect and embracing differences. Not everyone comes from the same sort of home or background, and that's okay in Girl Scouts. And also that you have computer skills, which is access to email and the internet, not just to utilize the VTK and to communicate with parents, but also to keep up to date with Council and GSUSA news. What does it mean to be a Girl Scout leader? It is an amazing journey of helping girls build courage, confidence, and character through Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts is like any other organization the girls are gonna join because it's gonna be a safe environment for them to try new things, fail occasionally, and learn what they're really, really good at. And you're going to be the one that helps them see this. As you build relationships, you're going to develop your leadership as you get to know each girl and each adult troop member. You're gonna communicate you're going to understand the needs and interests of the girls. And it's, remember, it's important to remember that you may not know everything that the girls might ever want to learn. Um, and you get to explore those things with the girls. However, we expect you to know where to go for information and resources. And it's okay because you're going to be surrounded by people who are gonna help you as, grow as a leader. Leadership is teaching. The girls, they can do and be anything that they're decision makers because you're going to allow them to make those decisions during the troop meetings. And girls, it's not just for knowing things, but also for the sake of development and growth. And you're also going to be a good role model. See yourself as a coach. Um, this is not a can lesson or activity. You're going to guide them and instruct them because you're going to know your girls best. So you're going to know, hey, we did this badge. They really enjoyed it. This badge is similar, but it's going to take their interest a little bit deeper and a little bit further. And you also are going to understand when you can kind of push their boundaries as far as learning new things and trying new activities. Belonging and leadership means that you're gonna be part of a troop and a team. We'll discuss the service unit and also your support here at council a little bit later. Let's get started. First things first, you need to register as a Girl Scout online. The site will automatically prompt you to submit a background check, and you can also select a troop from the catalog in your area. If you do not see a troop, then your volunteer support specialist will create a troop and send you that troop number. You need to take introduction to Girl Scouting with your volunteer support specialist, or you can do it in our online format, which you're currently listening to. Um, you also need to take the online training Girl Scouting 101 before attending Leadership Essentials. You'll see those links below and how to register for that. Within the four, first four months, you need to attend, um, within the first six months, excuse me, you will need to attend Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Training through Now Hear This. We also encourage you to take grade level portfolio training such as Daisy Brownie, Junior Cadet, and Senior Ambassador. Attend your service unit meetings. We will be sending you that information so that you can see the other leaders in your area. You can ask questions and um, find out different things that your service units are going to be doing as a group. Decide what journey and badges you're going to be working on. Review the safety wise chapter and volunteer essentials. And of course, um, get a list of girls who want to be in a troop from your volunteer support specialist. You're also going to need to find a meeting place and set up your first parent guardian meeting which we'll be discussing further later on. During that meeting, you'll also recruit some of those adults to help you. And during that meeting, you will also register the co-leaders, the troop committee members, and your girls. I know it seems like a lot, and it's easy to get overwhelmed, but really, these are just the starting points. Once you get these things done, and a lot of them will occur during the same time frame, um, it's just, preparing your lessons and having fun with girls from here on out. You'll also be open a troop checking account. The form with federal ID tax number is online. I would suggest that whatever ba bank you are currently banking with, that you would choose that bank to open your troop checking account with. And when you do that, you'll also file the corporate resolution regarding financial arrangements with your bank. Membership of the Girl Scout movement is for girls and adults, including dads. It's open to anyone who meets the requirements of adherence to the Girl Scout Promise and Law, which we just spoke about, and annual registration with the Girl Scouts of the USA. This includes all parents that will be at any meeting or attending any outing or cookie booth. The national membership dues are $25 per person and our council service fee of $5 for girls only, with a total amount of $30 per girl. 
Membership dues may not be transferred to another member and are not refundable. These fees apply to all girls, co-leaders, troop committee leaders, because the annual registration fee goes to cover additional um, supplemental accident insurance so that all the girls, all the adults at any meeting, any scout outing, um, lasting two nights or less. Um, so if little Susie does a cartwheel, breaks her arm, you're not liable, the meeting space isn't liable, the supplemental accident insurance can cover that. And that goes with the adults that go on the trips too. We'll discuss that in depth during your leadership essentials meeting. So just in case your parents want to know why they need to register it so that you're protected, they're protected, your meeting place is protected. Um, our registration goes through October 1st through September 30th. You can register anytime during the year um, and new troops may register at any time. Girls and adults may be added anytime. So if you have a parent that doesn't want to register at your first meeting, but then they decide they want to help with cookie booths or go on a camping trip later, they can register at that time so that they will be covered with that supplemental insurance so that they are able to attend the outing. And all adults and leader, all adults and leaders must commit, must submit a background check. Ours is eight dollars, and it's good for for three years, unless you have a background check that's less than a year old. And that's just to keep your girls safe and to keep you safe too. You don't want the person who is running your troop bank account as your financial advisor to have committed fraudulence with checks. So let's all just be safe. Girl Scouting is global. We normally think of Girl Scouting as something in our area or something in the U.S., but we are the world's only movement for every girl and any girl as part of WAGS, the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts. It's an educational organization based on spiritual values that's an open to all girls without distinction of creed, race, nationality, or any other circumstances. How did Girl Guiding and Girl Scouting begin? Well, Lord Baden-Powell, the founder of Boy Scouts, wrote a book that girls got their hands on and in 1909 a group of girls appeared at a boy scout rally in the uk in the uk declaring themselves to be girl scouts well lord baden powell decided there should be a movement for girls too guiding was announced that same year to respond to the specific needs of girls and young women it was overseen by his sister lady agnes baden powell and by 1912, there were also groups in ireland portugal norway and juliet gordon lowe founded girl scouting in the usa in 1912. The first World Conference held in England in 1920 was a historic occasion that gave representatives of the Girl Guiding and Girl Scouting world the opportunity to meet and exchange ideas and experiences. This is important because a lot of times we only see the community around us and it's important to remember as Girl Scouts we're part of something much larger. We're, we're part of a girl movement that started in 1909 and continues to this day and it's all around the world. The first World Conference was instrumental in shaping the collective experience of girl guiding and girl scouting. And it still continues today. If you are on Instagram, WAGS has um, a page as well as the Pax Lodge, the Cabana, and the Chalet in Switzerland. And that's always a good tool to show the girls, especially around World Thinking Day, which is February 22nd. It's the day that we set aside to think about our sisters in all the countries of the world what Girl Scouting and Girl Guiding looks like in other countries. This is going to be on your Girl Scout tab, but it's the World Association Freeful Symbol of World Friendship. It's always good to make sure the girls know that this has a meaning. It's not just a pretty pin. The blue stands for the sky, which shines over us all. Gold stands for the sun, which shines over all. The two stars stand for the girl Scout Promise and the Girl Scout Law, and the vein stands for the compass needle, which guides us to the right path. And the base is shaped like a flame for the love of all people, races, and creeds. This can also be printed out as a coloring sheet to be used at your parent meeting. Hi, I'm Benita. As Kelly mentioned earlier, Volunteer Support Specialists are Region 1. So I'm going to cover things with you concerning our Girl Scout levels, our uniform, organizational structure, and more to come. 
When we look at our Girl Scout levels, we serve girls K-5 through the first grade. We first have our daisies, K-5 and first. Our daisies sparkle with that first time ever newness in everything they do. Our Brownie Girl Scouts are second and third graders. They work together, earn badges, and explore their community. Our Junior Girl Scouts are fourth and fifth graders. They are big idea, idea make thinkers. They're explorers at camp and product designers when they earn their innovation and storytelling badges. Our Girl Scout cadets are sixth through the eighth grade. They chart their own course and let their curiosity and imagination lead the way. Senior Girl Scouts are girls that are grades ninth and 10th. They're ready to take the world by storm and Girl Scouts gives them millions of ways to do it. Ambassador Girl Scouts are 11th and 12th graders. They know that small acts create big change. While they get ready for life beyond high school, Girl Scouts helps them take flight. Our Girl Scout uniform is an important part of the Girl Scout experience. It's connecting girls to the Girl Scout traditions, displaying their accomplishments, and creating memories to last a lifetime. So when our girls put their uniform pieces on, then they're able to let the world know that Girl Scouts are here. We are representing Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts at each level now wear one required element. It could be the tunic, the sash, or the vest to display official pins and awards. Girls can mix and match pieces from the official Girl Scout collection to complete the uniform. True co-leaders may opt to collect money from the parents and purchase sashes, vests, and insignia from our council shop, or ask parents to purchase items on their own. And you can visit our council shop locations to purchase uniforms, starter kits, and more. Our shop staff are here to help. Our organizational structure. One main thing that we have to keep in mind that girls are the heart of our organization. From there, you have we form our Girl Scout troops. From there, we have our service units, our local Girl Scout Council, GSESC, our national organization, GSUSA, and then WAGS for short, the World Association of Girl Guys and Girl Scouts. So the World Association of Girl Guys and Girl Scouts, it is an educational organization based on spiritual values, and it's open to all girls without distinction of creed, race, nationality, or any other circumstance. Our Girl Scouts of the USA is our national organization supporting the work of more than 100 councils across the U.S. for more than 100 years. And we are headquartered in New York, New York. Our local Girl Scout Council is Girl Scouts of Eastern South Carolina. We are an independent 501c3 nonprofit chartered by GSUSA, operating under the direction of a local board of directors and overseeing all service units and troops within a given geographic area. A service unit is comprised of volunteers who support the work of troop volunteers within a given geographic area. And you will find out when your service unit meetings are being held, it's a great opportunity for you to meet the other volunteers in your area. Then we have our troops, volunteer supervised groups of girls who participate in the Girl Scout leadership experience. Next slide. What's the Girl Scout program? Well, at Girl Scouts, girls have tons of fun, make new friends, and go on fantastic new adventures. Our program centers on something called the Girl Scout Leadership Experience, a collection of activities and experiences girls have as they complete journeys, earn badges, sell cookies, go on exciting trips, explore the outdoors, and do take action projects that make a difference. So if you're looking, looking at this slide, you see discover, connect, take action. On the discover, they'll find out who they are, what they care about, and what their talents are. Connecting, collaborate with other people locally and globally to make a difference in the world, and then take an action do something that you're doing things to make the world a better place. You also see our journeys, um, our journey books, identify a problem, come up with a creative solution, create a team plan to make the solution a reality, put a plan into action, and talk about what they have learned. 
as girls go on journeys, they'll earn, they'll learn awards, excuse me, earn awards to put on their uniforms. The volunteer toolkit and journey books are your resources for the requirements to earning awards. Badges, what have your girls always wanted to do? Is a good question to ask them because usually you're gonna find that there's a badge or a patch for them to earn. Make their own movie, go geocasing, plant a garden, great news. They can learn to do all these things and more while earning Girl Scout badges. Badges are worn on the front of the vest or sash. The Volunteer Toolkit and Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting are your resources for the requirements to earning badges. So please be certain to have your Girl Guide um, books available for you and the girls. Our patches, think of patches like collecting memories in Girl Scouts. They're often a part of the fun activities you can do in Girl Scouts without the requirements of badges. Patches are always worn on the back of the vest or sash. And then our highest awards, bronze, silver, and gold. These represent the high honors a Girl Scout can earn. All three awards give girls the chance to do big things while working on an issue they care about whether they want to plant a community garden and inspire others to eat healthy for their bronze, advocate for animal rights for their silver, or build a career network that encourages girls to become scientists and engineers for their gold. They inspire others and they most definitely will inspire you. Next slide. Keeping girls safe is so important in our organization. So while working with girls and learning new skills is fun and rewarding, assuming responsibility for other people's children means that some level of risk management and due diligence is involved. There are several resources we can, we can use to help you minimize risk and keep girls safe. So understanding how many volunteers you need is very important. The Girl Scout groups are large enough to provide a cooperative learning environment, but small enough to allow the development of individual girls. Girl Scouts volunteer to girl ratios show the minimum number of volunteers needed to supervise a specific number of girls. These supervision ratios were devised to ensure the safety and health of girls. Your group must have at least two unrelated approved volunteers one of whom is female, present at all times, plus additional volunteers as necessary, depending on the size of the group and the ages and abilities of girls. Any adults that is supervising girls must be an approved volunteer. Adult volunteers must be at least 18 years old and must be screened before volunteering. One troop co-leader in every group must be female. Please refer to the ratio chart below. So you see how important it is for the safety of our girls. Next slide. Planning safe activities. When preparing for any activity with girls, start by reading the Girl Scout safety activity checkpoints for that particular activity. And you will be able to find that on our website. You can find these on the resources tab of the volunteer toolkit as well. Each safety activity checkpoint offers you required guidelines on where to do this activity, how to include girls with disabilities, where to find both basic and specialized gear required for the activity, how to prepare yourselves for the activity, and what specific steps to follow on the day of the activity. Safety activity checkpoints will note if a first aider is required. If safety activity checkpoints do not exist for an activity you and the girls are interested in, contact customer care at customercare at gsesc.org or our 800 number, 800-868-9911 before making any definite plans with the girls because we are definitely wanting you to be having safety in check for our girls. So what to do in an emergency? Because sometimes we do, emergencies do rise. Although we all hope the worst never happens, 
it's important to know and follow our council's procedures for handling emergency incidents. At the scene of the incident, safety is your first priority. Provide care for the injured person or obtain medical assistance and then immediately report the emergency to GSESC staff. Call our office at our 800 number listed Make sure a general first aid kit is available at your meeting place and accompanies girls on activities. This is very important. You may need to provide the kit if one is not already available at your meeting location. That would be a great activity for the troop to do. Make their own first aid kit or individual first aid kits for the girls. You must always have on hand the names and telephone numbers of our council office, parents and guardians, and emergency services such as the police, fire department, or the hospital. Looking at the troop size. The troop size should be large enough to provide girls experience in self-government, but small enough to allow for the development of the individual girl. So we recommend a minimum of at least 12 girls uh, for a troop. Um, if you have you know, uh, just a couple of girls at a meeting, that's not a Girl Scout troop. That's a little click probably. So we want you to have enough girls to have the self-government, they're able to uh, plan things and take trips and do all the great things that Girl Scouts have to offer. So we hope volunteers, you will add more girls to your troop with the right amount of adults that you need as well. Our troop records, which is very important. Each troop must maintain accurate cash records, individual girl records, a checkbook with monthly statements, and submit an annual troop finance report on the volunteer toolkit. Troops are required to submit a copy of their monthly statement to the service unit treasurer. This is very important, uh, volunteers. Always keep your receipts. Parents can, you know, ask to see, you know, how is the money being used in our troop? Where is it going? And as a volunteer, you should be able to share that information with them. Troop meeting, typical time frames. For our Girl Scout Daisies, one week for one hour, and these are typical time frames. A Brownie Troop, once a week for one to two hours. A Junior Troop, once a week for one to two hours. Cadets, once a week, or as decided by the girls and their advisor. Our Senior Girl Scouts, regularly as decided by the girls with their advisor and ambassadors regularly as decided by the girls with their advisors. But always remember, the meetings are very important, you know, regardless if you're meeting every week or twice a month. We do have some troops that may meet once a month, but when they're meeting, their meetings are usually lasting from about two hours to two and a half hours. You can read more about working with girls in Volunteer Essentials. Next slide. Your volunteer troop committee. On my honor, I will not do this alone. So our hope is that you will never do this job alone. It's a wonderful opportunity, but you can't do it alone. So before you hold your first troop meeting with girls, consider the support and resources you'll need throughout the year. Parents, friends, family, and other members of the community can provide time, experience, and ideas to a troop. So get them involved from the very beginning as part of your volunteer troop team. Don't wait till the middle of the year and you're thinking, oh, I need help. The time is right now. Ask for the help now. This team is made up of troop co-leaders like you and troop committee volunteers. All of these adults must be screened and approved. They commit to, those, to these roles based on the amount of time the volunteer has to give and interest in specific areas on the team. Interested individuals should be guided to join our volunteer buttons at www.gsesc.org. The troop committee volunteers play a big role in making your troop run smoothly and in supporting the girls' plans. So they're an extra set of eyes, ears, and hands whose skill sets are leveraged to help the troop safely explore the world around them. Ideally, your troop committee will have a troop cookie manager, a troop fall product program manager, a troop treasurer. Volunteers from this group 
may agree to take on other tasks as well, depending on what your troop needs are. For instance, there may be a chaperone for events that require more adults, volunteers to meet the volunteer to girl ratio requirements, or agree to be the driver for an upcoming trip that also requires more volunteer supervision. So looking to our left, you'll see the responsibilities of a troop co-leader, the responsibilities of a troop committee, the responsibilities, yes, are the parents and guardians because they need to buy into Girl Scouts as well. And the responsibilities of the girls to the troop. All Girl Scouts live by the Girl Scout law. Next slide. Below are some troop committee positions you might consider. And I mentioned some of these earlier. But broken down, you have your troop committee, excuse me, troop cookie coordinator will be trained by the service unit cookie coordinator and follow established procedures. Will excuse me, will explain and promote the sale to the girls, store cookies and meet required deadlines. A troop treasurer will handle financial transactions, hold the checkbook and submit paperwork as required. A troop helper will assist in planning and implementing events, outings and or overnight stays as well as troop activities at troop meetings. A driver chaperone can provide and or recruit sufficient transportation for troop activities. A first aider keeps the troop first aid kit and has current first aid CPR certification. That means a training will attend troop meetings as well as any outings, keeps a log of all medications dispensed and any first aid render. You can see more suggestions for help in the voluntary essentials appendix one forms chapter. Now let's look at what we've been calling, saying some names like service unit. So let's look at what a service unit is. And the service unit is composed of all troops in a given geographic area. The service unit holds regularly scheduled monthly meetings. This support team is the one you can look to as your experts in all things Girl Scouting. If you have questions about the Girl Scout program, working with girls, using journey books, selling Girl Scout cookies and other products, and local events or happenings go to this team of volunteers for the answers and ongoing support you need. The purpose of the meeting is to, for you to receive and discuss information, share your accomplishments concerning your troop, the needs and ideas, provide training workshops and activity ideas, provide input to the service unit delegates regarding the views of the service unit. The service team provides opportunities for girls and adults within its jurisdiction. Its purpose is to make decisions with top priority being the best interest of the girl, support girl and adult recruitment efforts, ensure the placement of girls bridging to the next Girl Scout program level, increase visibility of Girl Scouting, maintain and provide direct services to troops, keeps, keep co-leaders informed of dates and deadlines, provide ideas for troop activities, discuss and resolve problems arising in the service unit, discuss policy changes, prepare and submit required reports, and adhere to deadlines. And there's two specific names I mentioned, service unit and service team. And you see that as I you know, presented this, and you see the difference in between the two of those. The service team, the, there are six key, key service team positions, and they are the service unit coordinator, communications coordinator, event coordinator, program department, finance coordinator, fall sales coordinator, cookie coordinator, membership recruiter. Next slide. The secret ingredient of successful Girl Scout troops, family connections. Obviously, you want the girls in your troop to have fun, be inspired, take risks, and learn about themselves and the world this year. That's why you're a Girl Scout troop leader. The thing is, parents and caregivers want the same thing for their girls, but getting families to pitch in and play an active role in the troop while also enhancing the experience for their own daughter can be tricky for many volunteers. It doesn't have to be this way. After your troop's initial parent meeting, 
Here's how you can best keep parents and caregivers on board. Make the ask. The main reason people don't take action is because they were never asked to in the first place. That's why hearing one out of three Girl Scout parents say no, no one had communicated expectations around involvement with their, with their girl's truth is so troubling. Parents may have many talents, but they're certainly not mind readers. If you're nervous about getting turned down, don't be. Sure, a few parents might be unable to lend a hand, but the helpers you do get will be worth their weight in gold. And just because someone wasn't available a month or two ago, doesn't mean they won't be free to help now. So loop back, follow up, and ask them again. So don't be afraid, make the ask. Make it quick and easy. Everybody's got a full plate these days. So instead of starting parent conversations with a list of tasks or responsibilities they could take on, which can be intimidating, ask caregivers how much time each week they might be able to dedicate to the troop. Then go from there. For instance, if a troop mom or dad has 15 minutes each week to, each week to spare, they could organize and manage the calendar for troop snacks and carpools. If a grandparent has one or two hours, they could assist with leading the troop to a specific badge on a topic they're already comfortable with. For more ways parents and other caregivers can help out when faced with a tricky schedule, check out the Family Resources tab, where in the Volunteer Toolkit. Make sense of why. Explain that not only does the whole troop benefit with extra help from parents and caregivers, but also that girls feel a special sense of pride in seeing their own family members step up and take a leadership role. So getting involved can strengthen the caregiver, girl bond, and is a meaningful way to, to show daughters that they are a priority in their parents' lives. And then make family part of the formula. While Girl Scouts uh, program is, is always focused on the girls themselves, it's important and helpful to open up a few events to their families through the year, which is very good. Inviting the whole crew to celebrate their accomplishments in Girl Scouting, whether at a holiday open house, a bridging ceremony, or a fun reverse meeting where girls take the role of leaders and guide the adults, including caregivers, excuse me, caregivers through an activity. This will help parents better understand the value of Girl Scouts and be more likely to invest their time and their talents to the truth. That said, there's no need to wait for one of these special events to engage parents in their girls' Girl Scout lives. Keep communication lines open throughout the year, whether it's through your troop social media page, personal emails, or in-person chats. And even also, let the girls do their own little Girl Scout troop newsletter and let them, you know, give it to the parents. To keep parents in the loop on what the girls are doing and learning during each meeting and encourage them to let their daughters be the expert at home, explaining or teaching a new skill she's learned to the rest of the family. And next you will hear from Annie. Hi, this is Annie McAllister. I'm the volunteer support specialist for regions four and five. And now that you've heard from Kelly and Benita um, about your role as a new leader and what Girl Scouts do and some guidelines for getting started, I am going to be talking about those first few meetings and what you need to plan for. Um, so first, you are going to want to kick off the year right by engaging your parents. So in the parent meeting, um, you will need to talk about how Girl Scouting provides the best opportunities for girls when families step up and play an active part in the troop. So without meaningful support from parents, it's difficult for a troop to be all it can be. Plus the girls, um, as Benita discussed, will feel a special sense of pride when their families take part and show interest in the things they are doing. Um, so 100% of troops with the most satisfied parents and troop leaders report that they hold a parent meeting. So the parent meeting is the first meeting you have to start each troop year. Um, whether you are a new troop or a returning troop. So it's important to continue those um, each year in order to keep your parents informed. So parents, it will help parents understand what Girl Scouting can do for their girl. Parents and leaders identify ways they will work as a team to support the troop. Parents and leaders agree on what the troop pays for and what families pay for individually. 
You can fill key troop positions. You never know which parent will make an awesome assistant leader, troop cookie manager, etc. Parents know how the troop will communicate things like upcoming events, schedule changes, and more. Parents will learn about uniforms, books, and other important basics. So kicking off each year with a parent meeting sets the troop up for success, outlining clear expectations, building a team, and engaging parents in the Girl Scout experience is a great way to start off on the right foot. When parents are involved, leaders have support and the troop has a plan and the girls will benefit. So in the volunteer toolkit, which we've mentioned several times under the resources tab, you can find some guidelines um, for planning those parent meetings. And I will talk a little bit more about the volunteer toolkit and where to access that before the training ends. Um, gu guiding your troop experience. So use these questions to talk with your troop committee volunteers to outline your troop's structure before discussing these topics with your parents and guardians. Um, and keep in mind that if you're a brand new troop, at this point you might only have a co-leader. You might not have been able to establish that troop committee. That might be something you work on during your parent meeting. So if it's just you and your co-leader, um, just plan that with the two of you. So first you'll wanna figure out how often and when you will meet and for how long, the length of each meeting and until what part of the year. So a lot of our troops decide not to meet during the summer months. So that might be something you discuss ahead of time. You'll wanna discuss where you will be meeting. Your meeting space should be somewhere safe, clean and secure that allows all girls to participate. Some great meeting space ideas include schools, places of worship, libraries, or community centers. You'll wanna discuss which components of the uniform you'll want the families to purchase so that all the girls in the troop um, wear the same uniform. You'll wanna discuss if your troop will be a single grade level or facilitated as a multi-level troop with girls of many grade levels combined into one troop. You might have parents that have daughters of different ages, so you'll need to decide if you just wanna have one grade level or if you wanna expand that. You'll wanna decide how you're going to work with girls to decide on activities that are what they want to do, age appropriate, and to help them discover, connect, and take action. You can utilize the volunteer toolkit again to help you through this process by exploring options for activities and reviewing the meeting plans and resources lists. And definitely keep in mind that depending on the age of the girls, we always, Girl Scouts is meant to be girl-led, and that might look different depending on what age troop you have. How and how often are we going to communicate to parents and guardians? So keep everyone in the loop to make sure they know when, where, and what the activities will be, and the girls are prepared for the activity. Effective communication will help set expectations and clarify parent guardian responsibilities. And you can communicate to your parents from within that volunteer toolkit, um, or if you decide amongst yourselves that there's a different form of communication that works better for you, you and your co-leader can make that decision and discuss that with the parents. How will we fund the fund? Our troop, our troop charges, some troops, excuse me, will charge dues um, or use product program proceeds and or charge per activity. You'll wanna decide how much money you will need to cover supplies and activities and kind of outline a financial plan for the year. And then you can fill in the details once the girls decide what activities they wanna do. So that's um, a big thing you will wanna discuss with your parents at that first meeting is if you're gonna have troop dues, which most troops will proceed that way, especially if you're a brand new troop. If you're an already established troop um, that you're joining as a leader, that bank account will already be set up. And remember that you're free to structure the parent guardian meeting in whatever way works for you, um, but the following structure works for many new volunteers. So you might have a meeting where just the parents come, but some troops have the girls come to that parent meeting as well. Um, so you'll ask them, to sign in when they come in. You can hand out any other paperwork they might need, including a one-page information sheet. So open the meeting by welcoming the girls and adults, introduce yourself and other co-leaders or helpers. Have adults and girls introduce themselves and discuss whether anyone in their family has been a Girl Scout and talk about what Girl Scouting means to them. Welcome everyone, regardless of experience, and let them know they will be learning about Girl Scouts today. If you're new to Girl Scouting, don't worry, just let everyone know you'll be learning about Girl Scouting together. Ask the girls to go with the adult or teen in charge of their activity and begin the discussion. Discuss the information you've prepared for this meeting. All the fun girls are going to have, when and where the group will meet, and some examples of activities the girls might choose to do. 
that a parent guardian permission form is used for activities outside the group's normal meeting time and place and the importance of completing and returning it. And we'll discuss later where you can find some of these important forms. You'll wanna discuss how you plan to keep in touch with parents and guardians. You might have a phone tree, um, flyers to, for the girls to take home, posting on an invitation only group you can create on Facebook. Those are just some ideas for communication. You'll wanna discuss the Girl Scout mission, promise and law that Kelly read to you earlier. You'll wanna discuss the Girl Scout program, especially what the Girl Scout leadership experiences and what the program does for their daughters. When Girl Scout cookies and other products will go on sale and how participation in product sales teaches life skills and helps fund group activities. The cost of membership, which includes annual Girls GSUSA dues, any group payments, you can ask counsel for more information on this, optional uniforms and any resources parents or guardians will need to buy, such as the Girls Book for a Journey. The availability of financial assistance and how the Girl Scout cookie program and other product sales generate funds for the group treasury. You'll wanna discuss that families can also make donations to the council and why they, why they might wanna do that and that you may be looking for additional volunteers to form that troop committee. And you'll wanna be specific kind of once you decide what size your troop is, um, you can narrow down which committee positions you think are most important for your troop. It's also a great idea at that parent meeting to ask parents to complete their membership registration on their cell phone. So they can just go onto our council website to complete that. Um, so if you bring up at the meeting that you would like parents to be registered, um, you can let them know that they can do it right then and there so that they don't go home and then forget about it later. Um, and if they wanna register on a paper form, they will need to submit a background check that we will prompt them to do once their registration is complete. So go ahead at that parent meeting and remind them of when the next meeting will be if that's already on the calendar and if not, no problem. And then you'll wanna follow up afterwards with any parents that might not have been able to attend. So at the bottom, you'll see a little checklist for your first meeting. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to kind of cover the basics and review some of those details you discussed at the parent meeting um, about like when and where everything's gonna be taking place throughout the year. And you'll also wanna get ready by using your volunteer toolkit to verify your troop roster and it'll show you which girls have a current membership in the troop. And you can also email your parents from within that volunteer toolkit like we discussed earlier. So this might be a good time to ask parents to provide you with any needed items such as a health history form a uniform order form or troop dues. So be familiar with your agenda and use the six elements of a troop meeting that we're gonna discuss next. Um, go ahead and review and practice your agenda beforehand and expect to have fun when the girls and parents see that you're excited and prepared and ready to have a good time, they will follow your lead. So the six elements of a great troop meeting most important, your meetings should be fun. Girls come to Girl Scouts to learn how to be leaders, make decisions, and have fun in the activities they choose. And this is just a recommended meeting flow. If you find something else that works for you, you're of course able to structure those meetings however you choose as a leader. So first, you'll have a little startup activity. You can plan an activity for girls as they arrive so they have something to do until the meeting begins and give some time in case anyone's coming in late. It could be as simple as coloring pages, journaling, or talking with each other. This might look different depending on what age girls you have. So an opening activity is next, and each troop will decide how to open their meeting. Most begin with the Girl Scout Promise and Law, a simple flag ceremony, songs, game, story, or other activity designed by the girls. Third, you'll have the business portion of the meeting. You might collect dues and make announcements or plan an upcoming event or trip while parents and guardians are present. This gives you a chance to keep families informed. Fourth, you'll have your activities. Use the meeting plans found in the volunteer toolkit. Activities are already designed to fit easily into this part of your meeting as you help your troop earn badges and complete journeys. Fifth, you'll have a cleanup portion. Girl Scouts should always leave a place cleaner than they found it. And last but not least, you'll have a closing. So just like the opening, each troop can decide how to close with a song, a game, or a story. Um, and like I said before, this is just a recommended meeting flow and you can adjust accordingly with how much time you think is appropriate to spend on each portion. So now we're gonna talk a little bit more about troop finance. 
Um, so girls will have some big ideas about what they want to do in Girl Scouts, and as a troop co-leader, you will guide them on how to plan and budget for those ideas. How do you do this? So first, you can do troop dues. Many troops decide to collect troop dues as a way to help provide startup funds for troop activities and supplies. So if you're a brand new troop, this is especially important. These could range from $1 to $2 per meeting to $30 to $40 for the entire school year paid all at one time. And it's completely up to each troop to decide what works best for them to support the activities they want to do. Um, so before you have that parent meeting, the co-leaders and or troop committee with them as well will want to kind of discuss what you think is going to work best for your troop. And then you can relay that to the parents and see if there's any concerns. Um, you'll also want to look at the money earning activities. So the fall product and cookie programs are the primary money earning activities for a troop. You will learn all about these fantastic programs in a separate training when the time is right, so you don't have to worry about that right now. And if a troop participates in both of these programs, they may also decide to plan an additional fundraising activity. So these additional fundraisers must be approved by completing the additional money earning request form that you can find online, and they cannot be held during our fall product program or cookie program. Um, and please note that if you have a DAISY troop, DAISYs can only earn money through the fall product program and cookie program. So having an additional money earning project is something they can look forward to when they're brownies. So now we're gonna discuss briefly managing your troops funds. So remember that Girl Scout funds are girl earned and girl spent. So how the funds are used is a decision made by the entire troop, not just the leaders, parents, or a few select girls. It's important to know that troop funds belong to the entire troop and cannot be earmarked for individual girl use. Funds can be used to purchase badges and patches, journey and guidebooks, uniform components, to pay for celebrations and ceremonies, community service projects, field trips, and more. So let the girls come up with some ideas and then have the troop vote. Each troop must maintain accurate records, individual girl records, and a checkbook with monthly statements, and submit an annual troop finance report on the volunteer toolkit that you'll hear more about at that time. And troops are required to submit a copy of their monthly statement to the service unit treasurer. Um, so here you'll see just kind of our Girl Scout year at a glance. So you can take some time to go through this and mark some important things, maybe when you wanna plan different events, it shows many of our cookie dates. So this is just a great tool for you as a new leader if you're planning your entire year um, to kind of fit in some of these special events and holidays with your meetings. So now we're going to discuss some additional resources that are available to you as a volunteer. So I know you've heard the words volunteer toolkit a lot throughout this training. So this is your number one Girl Scout resource. And it is a digital planning tool that gives you resources and program content to get your year started and to keep it going smoothly with organization and communication tools. So it is fully customizable and troop co-leaders can explore meeting topics and program activities with their girls. You can add local events that your girls choose and you can print step-by-step -step activity guides and shopping lists. You can view and edit your troop roster. You can update contact information. You can renew members for the following Girl Scout year. You can manage girl attendance and track achievements. You can share troop meeting activities with parents and guardians. You can email parents and guardians with a single click. You can track and share financial information. Um, and there's a link available for you to explore more. So if you go to our council website as well um, and log into your My GS account, there is a tab where you can select volunteer toolkit and explore that more. Um, and you will not be able to access the volunteer toolkit until you have five girls in your troop. So just keep in mind that if you go log in right now and you're not able to access it, that might be why. Um, some additional resources are the Girl's Guide to Girl Scouting and the Safety Activity Checkpoints. Um, as Benita discussed earlier, there's different ratios to keep in mind for meetings and travel the safety activity checkpoints outlines in more detail um, different activities um, guidelines for them and when you need to seek approval from council. Volunteer Essentials is also available on our website, contains information, policies, and procedures to guide our volunteers and staff and to ensure that the Girl Scout program 
is delivered in a safe, consistent manner for girls across our council. By agreeing to be a Girl Scout volunteer, you're agreeing to follow the items laid out in this resource. The policies and procedures doc document is updated on a regular basis and the newest version can always be found on our website. And you will go through the Volunteer Essentials book in more detail at the Leadership Essentials training, but feel free to go through that on our website or purchase a copy in our Girl Scout shop. Um, and there's all the essential forms that you need for your troop can be found in the form section in Volunteer Essentials. Um, you can follow us on social media to stay updated on what's going on with different troops in the council and council events. Um, and customer care is always a great resource. If you need to get in contact with somebody at council, you can send an email to customer care or fill out the contact us form on our website and someone will get in contact with you soon. And we now have newsletters going out to registered adults every other week throughout the membership year. Um, and a little less frequently during the summer months. Um, and lastly, this is your troop co-leader training path. So you're currently taking introduction to Girl Scouting. Um, and if you have not yet completed Girl Scouting 101, let us know and we can send you the link to complete that online training as well. So your next training that you will need to complete either online or in person before your first troop meeting is leadership essentials. And after that, um, you can go ahead and get started meeting with your girls. And then you'll need to complete child abuse awareness and prevention within the first six months. Um, planning trips with girls is a training that you will need to complete if you wanna take your girls on any sort of trip outside your usual meeting place. Um, portfolio training is an optional training, but it gives great tools for you regarding that specific age level that you're working with. Um, and troop camp training is required for you if you would like to take your girls on a camping trip. Um, we do require that every troop has someone present at all times during meetings who is first aid and CPR certified. And that is the only training that you will need to renew every two years as it expires. Um, and I think and thank you so much for joining us for this training. Please contact myself, Benita, Kelly, um, or anyone at council if you have any questions regarding this training. And we do have a little questionnaire that we need you to complete um, just to show us that you listen to this training. And thank you so much for your time.